going everyone? It's Mike with this old hot rod. Working again on the 31 sedan project. If you look behind me, you see the chassis. It's all sandblasted. I whipped out my portable tractor supply special sandblast cabinet or sandblast pressure pot thing. I spent some time trying to figure that out a couple years ago and once I kind of got things dialed in where things needed to be and figured out what media to use, we actually got pretty good results from it and that was the same situation today. I got the entire frame blasted for the most part. I didn't really concentrate too much on the uh, suspension cross member, but the rest of it I got sandblasted and the reason I did that was so I can start to get the boxing plates laid out on the frame. So I showed you guys on a quick update on the last video. These are the boxing plates. I ordered these online. I got them on eBay. They were about $150. I figured just to go ahead and order the eighth inch plates. Uh, they came with the little tabs. Some of them do, some of them don't. You can see these little points right here. They have these little points, these tabs, all the way down the boxing plate. So when you set them on the inside of the frame, they won't sink into the C of the frame. They actually just touch the tips of the frame and then it leaves you the perfect area to, to run your bead of weld. So I'm just going to get everything laid out. I'll start making some cuts. I'll start getting them set in place, get them tacked in place, and then get this frame boxed in. So then once that's done, I'll be able to paint it. I do have to modify the transmission cross member, so I'm going to do that. I have to narrow it uh, so it will fit inside the box frame at that point. But once that's done, that'll be it. And then throw the suspension back on it, the motor and transmission. I'm gonna leave the motor the way it, the way it is as far as the appearance of it. I'm not gonna clean it up, I'm not gonna paint it. Uh, you know, if the next person wants to do that, they certainly can. So let's get right to work. I'm gonna move you guys a little bit closer to the, to the chassis itself. So I don't think it really makes a difference what side you start on. So let's start on this side. I got my tape measure and my Sharpie. So I do believe this particular boxing plate goes from the cross member backwards. Now like I said, what I'm going to do is basically just kind of get them laid out real quick. So I can just double check and make sure that that is the case. Fairly certain it is. I have the frame horn ones that are up on my metal shear, but I don't know that I'll box the front frame horns in. I don't particularly like that look. That's not something you... I mean you can see it if it's exposed and it kind of gives it the street rod look. So I'd rather leave those unboxed. What I'm going to do is basically just mark this side passenger side with an arrow up facing up so I know that's the top and I'm going to roughly transfer my marks. Now I do have a frame table. A lot of people probably don't realize that. I have a 16 foot frame table behind the shop. So what I think I might do is I'm going to get these boxing plates set in place Get to just get them tacked in place, not adding tons of heat. Then what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to get my frame table moved in here. And then I'll get this chassis set up on the frame table. I'll get the table leveled and then I'll get the chassis, everything leveled and welded right to my frame table. And at that point, I'll just be able to just weld the whole frame and I won't have to worry about it twisting. I don't think anyone's ever even seen my frame table. I've had it for several years. I purchased it off of someone local that no longer needed it and it's kind of just been sitting in my backyard waiting for the day I needed it and that day is sh is arriving soon you know what I'm doing is I'm just gonna set this boxing plate right up to the edge of my frame rail I'm gonna slide it all the way forwards where it'll meet the cross member and then I'm gonna take a square put my square on top of my boxing plate slide it till it hits the lower edge of my cross member make a mark switch it over to the front Do the same thing on the front All right, now it's gonna be tough for me to kind of figure out exactly where the top edge is on the boxing plate because it's a little bit rounded but I'm gonna set my square on top of the box of my motor mount and then slide it till it's just right at the edge where it rolls all right, so now what I'm going to do is I need to figure out the angle. So if the top is going to be the flat surface. I'm going to measure down from the top. That's going to be my outside edge. This is going to be my inside edge. Let me just make a mark. I can always fine tune it if I need to. Now I obviously didn't sandblast these plates, 
And I could have, but I didn't. So you can see here, that's the first spot that I need to relieve. And that'll be for the passenger side motor mount. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go grab my cutoff wheel and get that cut out. And move you over there so you can see. I also am gonna have to relieve this point here on the bottom edge of my cross member. So once I get this cut out, this will then settle down and then I'll be able to get an exact measurement on where I need to relieve that. Probably just clamp it right to the frame. Let me get that clamp on there. I'll get that cut out. So that's the first piece fitted. So the area that I relieved to go around the motor mount, what I need to do is I need to just narrow it down about an eighth of an inch, probably quarter of an inch because of the thickness of the mount itself. And then it will slide up into it. And then I'll be able to weld it on the outside and then weld it on the inside. And then that area will be all said and done. So that's a really good fit. I like that. It's good. I'm gonna move down and work on the next piece. So like anything, just take your time and just slowly work your way down the frame. This piece should be pretty straightforward. I think it's all the same thickness or the same height. The only thing we need to work on is to go up to, go from the back side to the front mount and put the boxing plate. So what we need to do is we need to measure from the back edge of the first boxing plate up to the boxing plate that I added for the cross member for the rear suspension. So we'll take top and bottom measurements. So 32 and 3 quarters and then 33. So 32 and 3 quarters on the top and 33 on the bottom. Alright, so let me get that measured, marked out. Get it cut out, we'll get it mounted in place. Let me just make sure there's not a front or the back. 3 and 3 quarters. 3 and 3 quarters, so no it's not. So 32 and 3 quarters on the top and 33 on the bottom. Let's get this cut out. Alright, pretty simple. Pretty simple. So what I do, I think I am going to get these tacked in place because otherwise it's just going to keep... I'll get this one tacked in place. Some people put tubes, sleeves in here to, like I said, run their harness, run their fuel or brake lines. That's great, but I'm not going to do that on this frame because that's more work and I don't really think it's necessary. I'm just going to get these tacked in place real quick so I can stop fumbling with clamps. It's kind of been a pain. Making sure I'm getting good fitment underneath, making sure there's a good edge, a good gap to weld. And like I said, just like I did on the top, I'm gonna get the bottom tacked in place. Fortunately, the downside is the frame's getting heavier every piece of metal I add. So this will be a little more difficult to move around by myself. So you guys can kind of see the process, getting everything fitted, figuring out where I need to make my relief cuts, get those areas cut out, get it fitted again to the frame rail, and then just get it tacked in place. Like I said, I'm going to get all of these boxing plates tacked in place 
With me adding the small six inch piece here on either side of the frame at the, the uh, rear suspension cross member, that's actually gonna work in my benefit because now I have an extra six inches of the back portion of the boxing plate and that's gonna allow me to plate the kick up also with, this, with the, just the original length of the frame rail. So that's actually gonna work out really good. And again, once that's done, I'll be able to get everything just cleaned up. I won't grind it down too much, but I'll hit it with a flat disc just to kind of clean it up. We'll get it primed and painted. Cool. All right, I'm just gonna continue this process. What I think I'm gonna do here on my transmission cross member is, I think I'm just gonna through bolt it. I already have the holes on the outside, kind of just rattling ideas or processes through my head. I'm just gonna take the drill and just drill right through, come out on this side. I'll, I'll narrow that cross member and then I'll just get it bolted in place just like it was before. I'll just be adding a little bit of boxing on the inside. The only other thing I need to do up front here is to get this little piece underneath the front underneath the motor mounts. I'm just going to narrow this down real quick and then get this tacked in place also. I, what I did was I just welded the very bottom edge to put two little tacks just to hold that little piece in place and it was kind of at an angle. Now I'm tapping it with a hammer and getting it to go flush with these portions of the boxing plate. I think I got it pretty close. I'll just throw a couple more tacks on it to hold it. All right, so that's this portion of the frame. Like I said, once I get it all tacked in place, I'll get it all welded, but that's gonna be another day. All right, so that's basically the process of how I'm gonna do it. I know I can't put a ton of heat onto the frame until the frame is secured, so I know the frame's not gonna twist because it will. So you want to make sure the frame is level and it's secured down, whether it's secured with clamps or it's welded to a table or on stanchions or something like that. So I'm going to make sure before I put too much heat into this frame that I do just that. I'm going to get all these plates tacked in place, both sides. I'm going to get it so I'm happy with everything and once I am, I'll get my gantry crane, I'll lift it up, I'll slide my frame table in here, I'll get it set down on my frame table. Once my frame table's level, I'll either clamp this frame down or I'll actually physically weld it right to the table and then I'll just be able to go to town welding. So that's something you definitely want to consider when you're boxing a frame. So doing it just on jack stands, it's not impossible. You just have to really take your time with the heat and really space your heat out just like anything else uh, because the metal will tighten up when it starts to cool. Let's continue backwards and get this entire side done. Once I do, I'll get the uh, driver's side done afterwards. marker wherever so I need to make a measurement or at least make a mark where I need to cut it at the end on the bottom underneath here on the back of my frame where it kicks up and comes up to a point I need to cut it off there and then I'll get that set up underneath the rear cross member get this piece tacked in place and then all I'll have left is this little piece here so let's get that cut off right now and get that measured and cut all right so I was able to get the entire passenger side boxed in Everything's just tacked in place. I'm going to drill out the holes for the transmission cross member once that's all set and done, ready to go. Alright, so at this point I got all the way from the front to the back of the frame on the passenger side tacked in place. I got this portion fitted at the kick up. And what I did was I had about a three inch uh, leftover piece. I ended up cleaning up the outside of the frame rail a little bit and got that tacked in place on the outside of the frame right at the kick up. And that's known as a fish plate. So I fish plated the outside of the frame. I won't do the inside. I don't really think I'll need to. Uh, so I'll have this all welded. So now that the passenger side's done, I'm going to jump over onto the driver's side. And then once that's done, I'll get this lifted up onto a table and get everything finished. All right, side number two. So I'm over here on the driver's side now. 
and I'm gonna get get to work on the front portion on the front boxing plate and then again I'm just gonna work my way back so the last couple of videos a few people have commented and said that you know I'm, I, I don't look happy or um, just you know it's people can see that I'm aggravated or whatever and the reality of it is I didn't plan on going this far with this project and I think the thought of my car is sitting in my garage and I haven't really given myself the time or the opportunity to work on them. It's kind of bothers me a little bit because, you know, I never planned on building this car. So coming into last winter, I planned on redoing my coupe already, my 30 coupe. I plan on having the 34 down here. And I know I put it on myself, but this car just really evolved into a lot more and, and don't get me wrong this thing is gonna be it's a super cool hot rod I, I love the look of it uh, I, I, I really I like everything about the car the only thing I don't like is the amount of time it's taking me to work on it and his alley hi Michael yeah Perfect fit, but now what I need to do is I need to work on this area here. So I need to relieve this area and I'm going to go grab the steering box and grab that to make sure to figure out exactly where I need to cut that. I have yet to clean this up, so that's going to have to happen pretty soon. Alright, so not a whole lot. Trim this back. I think I probably could have moved these forwards just a little bit shorten them at the front and right behind the front cross member because where they narrow on the front it just gets a little short a little bit of its space underneath where the frame starts to creep up and narrows or thins out but just pinching that in just the tiniest bit makes it so it shouldn't be an issue when it comes time to weld right, shut this off all right Let's get this fitted in here. So we need to cut off about probably an eighth of an inch. So we get this clamped in place and narrowed. Just have to compensate for the thickness of the motor mount itself. All right, so I'm gonna do just like I did before. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tack at the very bottom edge of this to the frame rail and it'll be kind of sticking out a little bit and then I'll just tap it up in place till it's flush with the same surface as the rest of the boxing plate because otherwise there's really no way to hold it in there all right so get those two pieces in place next is the big part that i have to cut down but i'm going to move it back behind the steering box as you know so it's probably going to end up being somewhere right at the base of this where that hump meets the top of the frame rail so what I'm going to do is I guess I'm going to measure from the transmission cross member forwards or the rear suspension cross member forwards. There. Nothing fancy, nothing special. Just getting it done.
So I need to shave the top, the top of this down and also on the passenger side it's just a little bit too tall. The reason being is I was able to slide this plate down further and the frame gets narrower as the, as fur, the further you go backwards. This frame, this boxing plate should have been further up and it wouldn't be so tall here in this part. So, so I just got to run my cutoff wheel and cut that off just a sliver, an eighth of an inch or so. Same thing on the passenger side. But let's get this measured and cut down and welded in place. So we'll do the same thing I did on the passenger side. Alright everyone, that's going to be a wrap for me on this particular video. I got the boxing plates tacked in place. The next video is going to be the frame sitting on the frame table. I'll kind of take you through the process of attaching it to the frame table. Make sure the frame table is level. It should be. The garage floor is pretty much level. And then getting the frame welded or secured, whether it's going to be clamped or welded to the table, either directly on the table or on stanchions. Once that's done, I will start the welding process. At the same time when the frame is fixed to the table, I will work on the transmission cross member. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to just through bolt right through the outside of the frame just like I had it. Tip the bolts are going to be longer because now they need to make up the difference with the thickness of the frame now that the boxing plates are on there. So, uh, so that's going to be it. Just kind of broom swept real quick. This went a lot faster than I thought it was going to. Uh, in, in, in the meanwhile, I had, I had actually taken a couple of breaks and gone up and saw Allie and, um, you know, so I was really happy with the way it went. It came out really good and I'm happy that it went faster than I thought it was going to. Uh, that's going to be it for another episode of This Old Hot Rod and I'm hoping to have uh, the frame on the table and all welded up and painted by the end of the week. Uh, this coming weekend, Sunday, Easter Sunday is actually my birthday and I'm hoping to Spend some time in the garage on Saturday and get all that stuff wrapped up so I can get this thing put back together. Uh, last bit of the last bit of work is finally coming down to the wire on this thing. And I said in one of the last videos, I do have a gentleman who's interested in the car. I have a lot of people who are interested in the car. Uh, there's not going to be an auction. There's not going to be a bidding type of scenario. Uh, the car will not go on eBay. Uh, I'm simply building the car to my satisfaction to a certain point I'm gonna stop at that point the car is gonna go up for sale I had mentioned it I believe in one of the videos or one of the past videos uh, I'd like to get 10,000 for the car but now that I'm doing a lot of extra work I've actually spent some other money on other things also I'd really I'm in the 11,000 range so if I could get somewhere in the 10 to 11,000 uh, dollar range for this car and a lot of the parts that are going to go with it. Uh, I said in the, another video also it does have a clear title for a 1931 two-door sedan so that obviously should help a lot of people if they're interested because uh, I know there's a lot of people out there looking for titles for these cars and this particular car happens to have one so uh, hopefully that'll help the sale of it. So again I do have someone who is interested in the car but at this point I still own it I'm still working on it so it isn't quite ready for sale yet so uh, thanks everyone for watching appreciate it thanks for following along We'll see you next time on this little hot rod. See ya. Bye-bye.